Finally, one of my favorites, it actually from it comes the word qima. Not the ones that they see eat. But qima is actually value. Thamanu shay. That a man being qawam is actually responsible for letting his spouse know how valuable she is. He gives her value. He appreciates her. He acknowledges her. He lets her know that she's beautiful. And a lot of men actually do the opposite. Let her know how fat she is, how ugly she is, how short she is, how dark she is, how freckled she is, or whatever. And they'll do that constantly putting her down, demeaning her value. You know, putting, putting, or insulting her intelligence. God, you, you're such a horrible driver. You're so annoying. Why can't you just take the normal right turn like everybody else? You know, why are you in this lane? Why aren't you in that lane? Constantly putting her down in some way or the other. And a qawam is someone who gives value instead of taking value away. Like if, if the spouse, if the woman feels, you know, stupid when she's around her husband, when she feels ugly when she's around her husband, when she feels valueless when she's around her husband, then he's not being a qawam to her. This is what we have to be, qawam. Now I wanted to highlight all of this in one particular context. The reason I was uh, probed to bring this topic up as a khutbah is because recently I've been engaged in quite a bit of travel. And what I do when I travel and I speak in different communities across, this re more recently was across the United States and somewhat in Europe. Uh, after a program is done, I spend a few hours just talking to people. Just People just come up to me and they ask me all kinds of questions or share concerns and overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, the women that came and spoke with me, uh, spoke with me about how their husbands uh, are, they're good husbands, but they allow their her in-laws to be abusive. In other words, they live joint family system or whatever it may be, or you know, they're you know the husband has his wife, but he also has his parents, and the parents are abusive to the wife, and she has to put up with it. And he says, "I can't do anything. They're my parents. What do you want me to do? You know, I, they're going to say things to you, but you should just be patient, because they're my. I, I'll always side with my mother. I'll always side with my father, etc." What happens here is there are two lines that have been crossed. On the one hand, as a husband, your responsibility is to your wife. You took her from her family. You took her from the protection of her parents. She had a wali, she had a father. And his job was to make sure she stays happy, safe, she's not insulted or humiliated. She's protected from all forms of abuse, physical, emotional, spiritual, all kinds of abuse. That was the father's role. And when you signed that nikah, and when you said you agree, then all of those roles were shifted over to you. You're, you're supposed to be as protective of her, even more so actually, than her father was. Because your relationship with her actually even goes further. She's even the mother of your children. There's, there's more here. And so you were supposed to be a shield around her. At the same time, you are also a son. A son to your mother, a son to your father. And this religion teaches us that we cannot even say oof to our parents. You can't raise your voice to your parents at all. Now you are being pulled in two different directions. You have these enormous obligations to your spouse. Mithaqan ghalidha, the Quran calls it. A heavy contract, a heavy agreement. It's not a light thing, marriage. And on the other hand, you have this enormous responsibility to your parents. And sometimes they make you pick which one you're going to be good to. And your job is actually to draw a line and say, this is what I will do for my wife. This is what, how I will take care of her. And this is how I will protect her. And to let your parents know, you can say whatever you want to me. You beat me up. You curse me out. I'm your kid. You do whatever you want. It's fine. I'll take it. But you can't touch her. You can't say a word to her. She's not yours. She's not your responsibility and she's not your child. Especially the culture I come from. You know what they say when the girl's getting married? They say, oh, she's like our daughter. Oh, it's like we have a new daughter in the family. Beware when you hear those words. Be th girls, be thoroughly warned. Because when they, she's, like, they say she's like our daughter, trouble is looming. Just a couple of weeks later, there's going to be commentary about how you didn't cook or you cooked you know, with too much salt or you know, you're lazy or you didn't clean. Or some stuff is going to begin. No, 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 no. The relationship between this woman and her husband's family, first and foremost, is a relationship of mutual respect. She has to be treated with respect, and she has to treat with respect. When it comes to rights and obligations, she is under no obligation to obey 
your parents. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry in that I feel sorry for you that you believe that for so long. But your, your wife has no obligation to obey your parents. And if you are forcing her to obey your parents and serve your parents, you are engaged in an act of injustice. You're being abusive. You're not a qawwam. You're not the qawwam Allah made you. You were supposed to be taking care of her. You didn't bring a servant into the family. And you're not supposed to be giving her lectures about you have to be patient, they're elder, they can say whatever they want. No, 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 no. When even our family does something wrong, Allah commands us to stand up for justice. Even if it's وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوِ الْوَالِدِينَ You have to stand up for justice even if it means you have to stand up against yourself. Meaning if you've done something wrong, you have to own up to it. And if your parents have done something wrong, you actually lovingly, respectfully, head down, humble voice, you still have to let them know you can't do that, mom. I'm sorry, you can't do that. Dad, that's not right. I'm not going to allow it. You're my dad, but those rights I will not allow you to trample. Because Allah will not be asking you, Allah will be asking me whether I was qawam over my wife or not. If you cannot be that shield, then you are in violation of what Allah expects from you as a husband. That's, that's very important to understand. That this last bit that I wanted to share with you, please take note of it. There are, there are three kinds of abuse that I want to highlight. Three kinds of abuse. The first of them is the worst of them, or it, you think it's the, most worst, the worst of them, is physical abuse. That is absolutely out of the question. Rasulullah wasallam outright, لا تضربوا إما Allah. Do not hit the female slaves of Allah. Outright. Do not hit the female slaves of Allah. Now Allah, Allah's Messenger could have said, لا تضرب النساء, don't hit women. Right? Don't hit women. Because the female slaves of Allah are women. But the power of those words is that you know when you, say, when you call them female slaves of women, uh, female slaves of Allah, then you, their relationship fundamentally, who, are, who owns them? Allah does. And when you mess with someone else's property, like if you destroy my car, you haven't offended my car, who have you offended? You offended me. If you came after my child, you haven't just insulted my child or abused my child, you've abused who? Me. I will come after you. You understand? If they are Allah's property and you hit them, who is coming after you? Allah. لا تضربوا إما Allah. Watch it. They belong to Allah. That's what the Messenger says. So physical abuse is absolutely out of the question. It is out of the question. And anybody who would like to argue otherwise, I'll stick around after Jummah. I can talk to you about it. The second kind of abuse is emotional. And emotional abuse could be verbal. It could be when the husband is not around, the in-laws come along and say, by the way, you're just here for a little bit. We can get rid of you whenever we want. That's my son. And when the husband's home, then how are you? You're so sweet. You're so kind. And this girl's going crazy like, when he's not around, they turn into the devil. And when he's around, they turn into an angel. So when I try to tell my husband that they're crazy, he says, what are you talking about? They're so nice. You're crazy. <laughs> and this is a kind of emotional abuse. A husband and wife have to have a trusting relationship. They have to. If, if you don't have trust, you have nothing. There's nothing there. This, entire, the, the, this is not a blood relationship. Marriage is a contract which means you agreed to share a life together. And that requires the utmost amount of trust. If you can't even trust what she's saying to you, if you think that she's lying to you all the time, then your marriage is not there. It's not there. For you to say, oh, I can't believe that, I can't believe that. Uh, well, you, if you can't believe it, then I don't know if you're in the right marriage. There's something fundamentally wrong. Something far deeper than just abuse. There's not even a trust left inside the marriage. Emotional abuse is sometimes verbal and sometimes it's not even verbal. Sometimes it's the way you're looked at. Sometimes it's the way people sit around you. She comes into the room, they get up and walk away. They don't even turn their face this way. They change the tone of their voice. Sometimes even the way in which you say, Wa alaykum as -salam. She says, Assalamu alaykum. Mother-in-law says, Wa alaykum as -salam. Or she doesn't say anything at all. That's a pretty abusive statement, to not say anything at all. And then she can turn around and say, Malik guy. What did I say? I didn't say anything. That's emotional abuse. And it's unacceptable. 
The last of the abuses though is the scariest one to me. And that's spiritual abuse. When the wrong is done, and then the religion is quoted. Allah says you have to be good to parents. This is what Islam teaches you. And they'll, they'll do the wrong, and then they'll invoke Allah and His book, and His Messenger وسلم, who are completely innocent of this nonsense. And then that's, that, that's the, the religious or spiritual kind of blackmail and abuse that goes on in families. This needs to come to an end in your family. I'm only talking to the men right now. I'm not up, up, upset with parents. I'm not upset with, you know, with anybody else. I'm not even upset with you. But I'm just giving you and myself a reality check. Look, our, our parents are not evil. They're not. They were brought up in a certain culture. They were brought up in a certain environment. They have certain norms that they've come to become used to. And some of those things are not right, but they don't realize that. They just do what they think in their mind is right. They're not, nobody's purposely evil. They're not, even though some women believe that about their in-laws. Nobody's intentionally evil. Everybody just thinks from a di very different point of view. You, however, are in the middle. You're in the middle of two worlds that are pulling at you. And you're gonna have to just, you ha you're gonna have to be the voice of reason and justice. And you know what that means? Sometimes you're gonna have to take the side of your parents. And sometimes you're gonna have to take the side of your wife. Because nobody's always right. And sometimes you will make a mistake too, and then you'll have to admit that you made a mistake. That's gonna have to happen too. Which means the role that you are in, this middle role that you're in, is a very difficult one, and it's a role in which you will constantly be the object of criticism. Somebody will criticize you all the time. Because whatever decision you make, upsets someone. Somebody will, congratulations on being a man. That's what, what it comes with. <laughs> That's the role you have to play. You know? And so may Allah Azza wa give us that delicacy so that we can really truly fulfill the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنْكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ The best of you are the best to their families. And he didn't say the best of you are the best to good families. Even if you have a messed up family, you still have to do your best. Right? And I'm the best of you to my family.